first item on the agenda is for the Tribush property, 64 Depot Road. We're going to continue that tonight. Yes, they've asked for um, what they probably is one more continuance. They're really not sure if they're going to go forward with the project. Okay. Um, but they've asked for one more continuance until January 16th. Okay. I move that we continue the proposal for 64 Depot Road, addition of a new deck and minor grading until the next meeting. Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So next we have the, the Crosby property for 481 Depot Road. Determination if the area is in jurisdiction. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Paul Shea with Independent Environmental Consultants, and I'm here with Mr. Crosby, the owner of 481 uh, Depot Street. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, the commission had asked us to uh, maybe take a look at the area of the agricultural fields which is owned by Arthur, uh, Arthur H. Hall Sr. and to possibly see about doing test holes out in the field uh, concerning the status of the, um, the soils, the vegetation and hydrology. We, t we talked with the Hall family and they agreed to let us do a uh, test hole out there. Um, went out there on December 14th. Um, it, I think 10 days prior to our uh, inspection that day, there had been no rain, no precipitation. Um, and so we got a pretty good look at what was going on there. And what's interesting about the site is that when we did it, it was during the wettest fall in I guess, Massachusetts history we have been talking about. We did a test toll about approximately 125 feet from the property line from um, Mr. Crosby's property where it meets the Hall property. And we went, it's, it's a field area right now. And we did it, uh, we went down approximately 27, 28 inches in the test hole. Uh, groundwater was observed at 26 inches. Soils were saturated at about 23.5. Basically sandy soils. No signs of modeling typically that you have within hydric soils. Now typically it within cranberry bogs that are at the same elevations to where the pond is next one. We would have been standing in water on, on a test hole trying to do it this time of year. Because the test hole we did was actually at the very beginning of the wet season. We are actually there not during the growing season. The growing season had passed. It's typically closes out at, you know, right before Thanksgiving in this section of Massachusetts. So we sent the data sheets in to Amy. Uh, she then requested just a, um, some sort of map to show exactly or approximately where we did the test toll. So we actually just sent that in because it shows on uh, Google Maps, it shows Mr. Crosby's house. It shows the agricultural fields on the Hall's property and approximated in where we did test hole one, which is the data that we submitted to the commission. So what does all this mean? I mean, basically what it's showing is that on Mr. Crosby's property, there's no wetlands, but there's also no 100-foot buffer zone. He has basically no jurisdiction on his property from Conservation Commission. Um, and in this section of the Hall's property, it's clearly classified as upland. It's an upland field area. So it's not wetlands, there's no buffer zones within that section of it. We, obviously the halls own other land, but this is the only area we were asked to test in terms of the filing for the RDA that was filed by David Crosby. So basically there's, there's no jurisdiction on Mr. Crosby's property in terms of conservation. Thank you for yep. making those tests and, and doing that uh, little bit extra work. Um, any thoughts on this one, Amy? Yeah, a couple things. Um, thank you for for going back and doing doing the whole and uh, you know agreeing to have that done on the property. Um, it's really just for the commission, I think, to, so to have our due diligence to have actual proof um, in the file. That way, you know, it sets a precedent if we didn't request some, some, that kind of information. Mm -hmm. So, um, I w just one question I did have and. Um, is you didn't note in the data sheets any American cranberry being present. Right. Um, there was none present in that section. Not where of the we field. did the test till no. Okay. 
um, as it's been, you know, farmed as such, I would have expected at least a little bit, but that, that's fine. I think it sort of goes hand in hand with what we said about the site and actually what yeah. Mr. Hall has said about the site. Because of the pumping of the water up from the reservoir, once that stopped, the, even the small amount of cranberries he was getting within that section of the agricultural sure. field can't possibly yeah. survive because the water table's just not yeah. there. No, and, and I, I agree um, that, um, you know, the soils and the water would be what would support it if it was there. Right. Um, so I was just shocked that it went away kind of quickly. Yeah, well, this is, this is a very atypical situation okay. in terms of where in most cases the cranberry bogs are, that were once wooded swamps, they become mm -hmm. cranberry bogs, they're right next to the pond. This one clearly was getting cranberries to grow up there, but it was based on the hard work that mm -hmm. the Hall family mm -hmm. was doing in terms of pumping that water up 11 feet in elevation. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the 11 feet, um, I don't know if there's a perched table or whatnot, but I mean, if there's if the reservoir is roughly 11 feet below and you did find groundwater about 26 inches below, um, you know, the, kind of the magic number for a wetland hydric soils is like 12 to 16 inches. What that could support more wetland type plant life. This doesn't have that and it is deeper than that. So, but it is interesting that not so far away you have the reservoir, you know, the water table at a certain level and then you did find groundwater at only 26 inches below here. Just a, right, know, and, it's nothing. And just for the record, when I know that in the past, when I've been on this site, going back to probably the first time I met Mr. Hall out there, Alan Hall was probably in June of 2015, very close to the area where we were doing our tests. And it was, this was in summer, it was very hot, mm -hmm. very dry conditions. There was a, old, you know, test hole in the ground there that went down at least three and a half feet or whatever, just not a drop of water in the test hole. No, I mean, just no sign of any, you know, leaching or modeling within the soils. And so that's showing me that in the summertime, that groundwater table is lower and that's mm -hmm. during the growing season. This could be what we were seeing here. I mean, at the, when we went to do the test hole, at the very land surface, we had to actually break through. Mm. There was like some frozen soil conditions. Mm -hmm. That's not saying that we didn't hit, didn't hit areas where we didn't have any water to, per se in the soils, but underneath it, there could have been an area of another frozen layer sort of holding up the water that we were seeing. Right. We just recorded what we had in mm -hmm. terms of what, per, what we perceived to be the groundwater table. I, I agree with Mr. Hall that I think that in, the, the real groundwater table out here is the same elevation as the reservoir. That would make sense. Yes. Um, kind of long story short, based on the data sheets um, and, and the test holes, um, I would agree that this, from this, where this was taken, from that area towards Mr. Crosby's property is not a wetland, um, and that his property is non-jurisdictional cannot recommend that for the rest of the, the um, old cranberry bog that it is, but at least from the spot where the test hole was taken towards Mr. Crosby's property is not wetland and that Mr. Crosby's property is non-jurisdictional. That's all I got. Thanks, Amy. No, it, it seems pretty clear. Any um, geometry that would have a, a closer length from the property to the, the other bog, is, is that just an unknown or? Not that we have. Right. Okay. Questions on the table? Uh, yeah, that, that, that bog's always been especially dry. I've always noticed that. So Correct. It seems like other areas throughout the bogs could possibly have actually been wetlands it's uh, I, we don't really have any data on that there is the the small naturalized wetland to the south i believe well what, what's, what's kind of interesting <coughs> about this site is that <coughs> in the area the lower areas you get towards the railroad tracks mm -hmm. um the area that, that that's currently in production 
uh, for cranberries. Again, he's with the Hall family is bringing the water up uh, from uh, from the, uh, the West Reservoir. When the bike trail was going through permitting wise, um, LEC, Lolito Environmental Consultants, were the ones who flagged wetland resource areas through almost all the towns associated with the bike trail. Um, I remember looking at, I was actually working as the uh, conservation agent in Brewster at the time when that permitting process was going through. And so I was quite familiar with the project. LEC didn't call out the Hall property as wetlands. And that actually went before the Howard's Conservation Commission for the bike, bike path approval. So even back then, LEC was, they, they probably saw the lower section where some cranberries were growing, but they did not call it out as wetlands on their, on their you know, DEP filing. In your experience, do they usually determine crummy bogs to be wetlands? Is that typical? Or <clears throat> I would say it's typical for cranberry bogs to be deemed wetlands based on elevations with free water or open water nearby. Mm -hmm. um, Again, I think this piece of property is what we call atypical. Yeah. This is not your typical bog conditions, and it would have ne you could have never grown a cranberry in any section of the hall property if they weren't pumping up, right. basically almost you know permanently from the uh, reservoir. Um, My guess is years ago, if you had a chance to you know develop a piece of property, why not try to expand the bog as far as you could? because you own the land, you had a chance, and then some sections might be upland and you gave it a shot and maybe it didn't prove to be that, you know, beneficial. Um, that could be a case here. Right. I mean, in, in this particular case here, if we have a piece of land and agricultural um, exemption and agricultural activities, but um, Mr. Hall has talked about growing other crops here besides cranberries within different sections of the land. All right. But for right now, I mean, clearly, Next to Mr. Crosby's, it's it's not it's not a biological wetland there. Yep. Any more questions? Um, well, yeah, I'm okay with uh, you know s saying giving a negative determination for the purpose of this this property, this, but um, I'm uncomfortable without with the whole bog uh, <coughs> without a lot more data. I understand. Um, yeah, we. I, I don't have that file with me back from then. I could, I could grab it um, and follow up with that. Um, I mean, usually wetland delineations are valid for about three years, um, but it's. Uh, it would have to see if it was particularly discussed at the meeting or not as well, or if it just wasn't flagged. The but. the other thing is that I think um, I know that. I had a meeting with Amy and with Mr. Hall, I think this was back in September of 2017, about the, the, the Hall property at that time. Mm -hmm. And I know that there was an email <coughs> kicking around from Gary McCutch from uh, DEP Wetlands. It basically, in the gist of what he said in his email was that it would appear that the agricultural lands on the Hall property actually upland areas and the way he was getting to you know produce cranberries there was by the pumping up and should that pumping stop everything goes back to the natural groundwater table within that area that the areas would be classified as upland if the pumping all stopped so I think DEP is aware of that too interesting um, yeah. Yeah. Mark, do you have any comments? Um, I've seen the soil conditions over there, and I'm aware of what grows there and what doesn't. I mean, I would agree. I don't think that's a jurisdictional area. John? Yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with the soil conditions over there myself, but based on what's been said here, um, my feeling is we should, we should just constrain our considerations here to Mr. Crosby's case and determine that his property is not jurisdictional and based on everything west of where the test hole was yeah. was made. We don't really need to concern ourselves with 
I don't think, I don't see why we need to concern ourselves with a larger issue of the whole property in general. It's that's a different yeah. question. Correct. The application was actually just for right. as right. it pertains to Mr. Crosby's property, so. Okay, um, Mr. Crosby, were you about to say something or? No, I was just actually about to repeat what Amy was gonna say is I think that at this point for me, I was just concerned with my area mm -hmm. right. and removing the jurisdiction from conservation and the halls. That's their property and I think they should deal with it as they see fit. Sure. Uh, from the audience? Yeah, hi, thank you very much. I just wanted, I'm the neighbor on one of the halls, I'm Alan Hall for the record. And I just wanted to back up some of the conversation earlier before you make your vote, which I think is gonna be in favor of Mr. Crosby, uh, which is what we all think the situation should be anyhow. Um, just as Mr. Chase, you talked about earlier in the Cranberry development and time and over time people expanded. Just for a matter of record, this original bog, it's called the Depot Bog, and through my title researches, it started about 1850, 1860 with Elmer, uh, Elijah K. Kroll, and it was originally only five acres. And the area that we have now is eight. So there's a, if you can look at your Google Maps, you'll see a large ditch going down the center there, going in the easterly, westerly di division. That's basically the five acres to the north of that ditch, to the bike path, is the five acre area. To the south of that, that's another three acres, which has been carved out of upland. If you look at the Google Maps, you can see sand areas and circles. That was all, when we bulldozed off that top of that area, it was a foot and a half, two feet higher than the topography of the ground that it is now. So it was clearly up and down, and my grandfather used to get mad about that because the bogs weren't level, and he had to pump more water and such. And it was difficult because back then they only did things with hands and shovels and wheelbarrows. So through the advancement of technology, we laser leveled it, and that's what we have. It's a pretty flat surface there, which as Mr. Um, Shea indicated, we're gonna utilize in a different agricultural commodity because uh, cranberries are not so lucrative. However, we're gonna keep cranberries going because we feel very, uh, it's part of our heritage, so thank you. Thanks for that little thank bit of history. Sir. Appreciate it. Um, any other comments? So I guess we're, we're looking for a motion. Um, what type of a determination would it be that it's not a resource, which is? Um, I don't actually have the number in front of me. Um, I would just I would just recommend that you approve the project, sta um, stating that Mr. Um, Crosby's property is not in jurisdiction, mm -hmm. and that from essentially the test hole area towards Mr. P um, Crosby's property is not wetland. Get and I will fill. I I will fill out the um, number. It's one. It's not two. I don't think. I think it's a positive, actually. Oh, okay. But I will. I will check on the actual number of the determination. But the the wording. I, that's what I would recommend. Okay. Somebody want to tackle that tricky no, motion? Uh, yes. Yeah, so make a uh, motion to determine that the. Property at 481 Depot Road, David Crosby, is not in conservation jurisdiction, and the area between the test hole and his property is um, not a wetland. I'll second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to send this around. Um, this will be ready probably by the end of the week or early next week. Do you want to call when it's ready? Yeah, that would be great. Sure. Right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Have a good night. Thank yep. you very thank much you. for your time. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yep. Good evening. So the rest we kind of officially have to continue. Okay. We want to run through them. All right. So for notice of intent, we have. The Borman property at 176 John Joseph Road, Vista pruning request. We would like to continue that to the next meeting or? Yep, January 16th. We so haven't heard from Heritage yet. Okay, motion that we continue that to the next meeting. Second. Second that by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is the town of Harwich, Hinckley's Pond. Proposal to treat Hinckley's Pond with aluminum sulfate and sodium aluminate. To bind phosphorus, there's a request to continue till February 6th. February 6th, yep. Okay, so I, I move we do so. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Next, we have the Weeks property. Well, actually, um, I guess I'll defer. Somebody else can announce that if yeah. people don't mind. 
either uh, John or Mark pronounce that, it. I don't know if it's okay to ask this, but do you know if, if the no. traps have been stored there yet? I haven't seen them, okay. but I haven't no, driven I by I in the past few days. I happened to go by there this afternoon and there wasn't any in the yard. E yeah, either Mark or Jim, if you could announce that hearing, that would be good. Yes, uh, make a motion to continue the hearing for Ken and Brenda Weeks until, oh, sorry, which day? January 16th. January 16th. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. It's okay. <laughs> one, one abstention? <laughs> Two abstentions. Two abstentions. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. And then next we have the Vail property, 85 Sequatum Road, request to rebuild bulkhead, boathouse, dock construction, access pass, stable location, with tree cutting and site restoration. I guess would like to bring you to the next meeting. Yep, still haven't heard from Heritage on that one either. Okay, so I move that we do so. Second. Second by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then we're on to order of conditions. first. Sure. Oops. Did you have any further business? Well, right now we're going through some order of conditions, just kind of you know, going through business of the commission. It, if, um, would you? It's up to you. If yeah. you wanna, it's up to you. Yeah. Um, well, you're here. I don't. I don't mind um, taking a few minutes if you'd like. It's not on the agenda, so there's only so much we can say. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So sure. I take advantage of being the only person in the audience tonight. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a situation where I think I just wanted to come and discuss it. The reservoir bogs. Mm -hmm. I know that you've are in custody, control and custody of it, and I know that you have several bogs here under control and custody of the Conservation Department. I was once the chairman of the Agricultural Commission in the town of Howard, and we passed the right to farm by law. Mm -hmm. The reservoir bogs are probably the only bogs that we can salvage in the town of Howard right now that we own currently. Mm -hmm. Great Swamp is off line. Um, Rodney O'Brien's, which is now on Main Street, which Leo Kakunis runs, I don't know what's going on there, but he had a 20-year lease there, and I think that comes up in about five years. Um, so that bog is still in question about future leases. But the reservoir bog was is something that my grandfather owned in 1962. He sold it to Ralph Guider, and Ralph Guider was the first person to come in the town of Howard as a big developer. And then they got together and they formed this big thing that they were going to subdivide and develop the whole area there. And the town stepped in and said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So they bought it for conservation. And when they purchased it from Mr. Guida, the, the goal was to keep the cranberry bogs active and have the Conservation Commission uh, continue to have the care and custody and lease it and manage it. That worked out well for many, many years. As we all know, the cranberry industry has gone flat. It's pretty scary right now. However, that bog is quite unique. It's different than the bog we just talked about. That bog is gravity fed, and that's what the West Reservoir was built, so that the water could flow through that bog. It didn't need any pumps, and that was built in 1929. So that cranberry bog has a lot of advantages to operate if you don't have a lot of funds to continue it by gravity feed. You have the ample amount of water, you have plenty of sand, the roads are there, the vines are there. The northern portion bog, the small one, that's higher. You need to pump that one up. But the second one where the inlet flume comes into, that could be gravity fed, and the vines are still viable there. Uh, Mr. Cottrell, when he rented the bog back in the 80s and 90s, he renovated and added on. That was all upland right near the inlet flume. It was a large finger that went way out, and he put Stephen variety vines in there. Those vines are still salvageable and workable today. Um, I'd just like to see or make some kind of a motion, hopefully through the conservation, that you move forward with continuing the cranberries in the town of Howard. We've lost so many acreages, and it wouldn't cost us anything. Right now, it's sitting there not costing us anything except for people walking there, vandalism, litter, 
things of those natures. If somebody was running that area, they would police the area where they would keep it up nice and neat. It wouldn't grow up. Now, I understand if you don't want to do the whole, I think it's like 11 acres, the bog is. If you don't want to do the whole thing, I can understand that because the lower part where it goes out the outlet from the Heron River is in pretty bad shape since it's been sitting fallow for a few years. But that middle, pond, middle section and the upper section still have um, some viability there to continue. Now, if somebody wants to do organic, that would be their choice. If they want to do conventional, that would be their choice. I don't think that should be uh, part of the negotiations. I think that's farming is subject to so many things that you just don't know what you're going to run into. You could get infested with fireworm, you may have to spray it, or you could use the water and flood it and kill them out, but then you kill your crop too, but to save the vine. So there's a lot of things to it. But I have two sons, Benjamin and Nicholas. Now, I don't know if they want to do any more cranberries when they get old or whatever. We got enough to do with what we got. It's a part time venture. But the next generation of Howard, you know, and we got to keep things the way it was when I grew up. I don't want to. Yeah. So I just want to see that's a beautiful asset that I think could be utilized in many fashions be it fishing, hunting, walking, trailing, bicycling, cranberry and farming, all the above. It's worked since 1964 or 5 when the town bought it to about three or four years ago. There was never a problem. It always enhanced the area. It was policed. And I just, I just hate to see it grow up like the private property on Bank Street that the trust bought. And I hate to see it grow up like Great Swamp. My grandfather owned that one at one time. And it's just something that the town was built on. We were built on fishing, whaling, cranberries, now tourism, and people love coming to Cape Cod. It's something that we're losing quick. It's, it's going really fast, and I don't think it's too much to ask for the town conservation to keep that viable. The heron used to be sane there years ago, tractor trailers taking heron out of there. It was a big fishery. Um, I got photographs of that. So it's always been an active place, and I'd hate to see it go away. I'll do some more homework and get some more information if it's helpful to the board, but just as a resident and as an abutter to the property and it has a vested interest of growing up there, I'd hate to see it go down. We're, you know, we're kind of outnumbered nowadays with this kind of feeling, but I still want to fight the fight and keep it going. I greatly appreciate your comments. Thank, thanks for coming in. I think in a month or, or two, we're going to have a, a formal agenda item to discuss this. So I, I hope you'll come back and, and say those same things. I think tonight, I don't, I don't want to have a too much discussion tonight on this. No, at the last meeting, the commission, we put it under like care or, um, of our conservation properties. But um, I think the board wanted, a, we knew we were going to be short members tonight. So we didn't want it as a full agenda item because we wanted more of a full complement of the board to have a, a candid discussion about it. And we wanted to put it on a lighter, even though tonight ended up being light, um, wanted to put it on a light agenda so that, you know, the public could come and not have to wait till 10 o'clock at night until we finish our other business too. So right. it, it will be in the next, uh, keep an eye on the agendas, feel free and contact my office, but in the next month or two, um, we'll be having another you know, public meeting about it. All right. Well, I just wanted to say that and get that, keep no. that out there, that the interest level is still out there, even though it's a very small minority of folks, but we still have a voice and we want to make sure somebody can uh, no, your, take your, care of it. Your experience in that area is really helpful for, for our thought process, so thank you. I hope you can come out again. If you want to share any of those photographs of the old Heron Run, please bring them in. I'd love to scan a copy sure. or two. Yeah. Um, I've got one, and it's, it's unbelievable what went on there years ago. A reliable fish company. My grandfather used to sell the fish to in Maine, and you know nobody would like to hear that today. But that's what they did in those days. They'd had the winches and Marshall Sieberman and different guys were taking. They'd load up the tractor trailers and take it to Maine for cat food. <laughs> Before that, it was sold in Boston for tub trawl bait, mm -hmm. and so it was, it was different markets. And, A lot uh, of history. You know? Yeah. I'm just afraid if we don't keep the cranberry bogs going in the town of Howard.
do you pick them in water? Yes, now they do. They perfected that. But years ago, people had, had it in their mind that you had to put boots on and go in a cranberry bog like, um, you know, you were mowing your lawn. But yes, as I say, now they kind of do that with water picking and what have you. But uh, the stories, because we used to sell cranberries at our home, and my husband and I started called Cape Cod Cranberries back in, oh golly, 1976. I believe really it was. Sorry, but you should, if it was more than a quick comment, you really should be at the mic. Just because this is televised? You should be at the mic. Huh? You should be up here at the oh, mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were just. I thought it, I did, if it was a quick comment, it was. I, 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 I'm sorry. Are we t being televised? Yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, I used to love it. People would come to the house, and uh, well, we, we built our barn. Uh, that was the reason. And we started Hall's Cape Cod Cranberries down in our cellar. Um, and then my husband said, we got to come up above ground. And that's when we built the first section of our barn. And I was out there um, even late at night. We had little crates. And they said Hall's Cape Cod Cranberries on them. United Parcel picked up probably about anywhere from 15 to 20 boxes the next morning. And they went from here to California and maybe beyond. And in fact, Tony, who used to own Bedford Fruit in Hyannis at the time, used to say, Hall's Cape Cod Cranberries, coast to coast. And uh, everybody just loved coming. Uh, we did a uh, cranberry cookbook for Alan's class. It, I believe it, he was in the sixth, fifth or sixth grade. And um, then what we didn't sell, at we had a uh, cranberry festival back then, but it wasn't as big as it is now. And the cookbooks all didn't sell. so. The girls, of which I was one, asked me if they could bring the extra cookbooks over to my house so that I could sell them for the class. And they said, we will pay you. And I said, absolutely not. I sold every cookbook that I had given to me to sell for the class, and they got every dime. And I'm just so afraid. I mean, I'm 73 years old now. But I did graduate from Howard High School in 1963, the last class to graduate from the Exchange Hall. And um, I, I see Howard going down a little bit. Yes, um, I think we're a, a great town, but we've got to keep the everyday businesses going. And of course, Cranberries was the biggest bu business in the town of Howard, along with fishing. And Alan's right, we got to bring it back. And also, may I tell you, um, my husband, God bless him, he has uh, multiple sclerosis for 43 years. Right now, he's bedridden going on the third year. It's very hard and very difficult. And um, he loved the cranberry business. Of course, he grew up in it with his father, John Hall. And um, John Hall, my father-in-law, he owned many acres here in the town of Howard. And uh, it, it is sad to see that it's going down. And like Alan said, there's two boys sitting behind me, my grandsons, Benjamin and Nicholas. And I sure would like to know that they continue in the cranberry business. Um, I feel that I have given my all to the cranberry business. I've, I've been there. Yes, I had to go to work too, but I was also on those cranberry bogs helping my husband. My husband put in the flume. Um, the outflume down there at the reservoir box. He designed it and put it in. People didn't believe that he did it. He did. My husband is and was a very smart cranberry grower. And please don't allow the cranberry business to go sour in the town of Howitch. Because, um, you know, Massachusetts used to be number one. And of course, now I think um, the state of Washington and Wisconsin, they're ahead of us. But, you know, let's get back to basics here and, and don't let all these bogs grow up. I mean, that's what I was going to tell you, and then I'll let you go. Alan, born in 1971, he took his first step down at the reservoir bogs, and I can show you the exact spot. So that cranberry bog means a lot to me, but so don't the others that have been in our family. And again, I really hope that you will reconsider. And I'm sure there's more 
uh, people in this town that would be saying, wow, why wasn't I there at that meeting? I would have said this or I would have said that. And I just hope you all have a happy new year and um, let's keep the cranberry business going. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll try to get the word to you when that we have the, uh, when we have the public hearing with that agenda and we'll try to get the word to you and we hope you'll come back. So thank you, have a good night. Good night. Okay, so we're on to S Stevens for a condition. Yes, please. This one was pretty straightforward. It was the um, roof over the patio. All right. So I, I kept the old conditions in there. There's really, I'm trying to see if there's any, even any new conditions. Um, <laughs> Special condition, hold on. Well, no, sorry, this is a brand new notice of intent. So everything from the old one would have been on that old order, but these, there's only really six that I thought for, for this one. I have no comments on the special conditions as written. Do we, um, I guess here's a s broad question, do we want to have an as-built plan for this or is, is this a project that would not really require an as-built plan? Mm. It's up to you. It dealt with construction of some sort, so I yeah. put it on there. It's completely within the footprint of the patio that's right. already existing. I mean, it it's, really it's doesn't It's up to you. Any. I put it on there and I can take it out. <coughs> Personally, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. But it could be a cost that isn't fully necessary. All right, yeah. that's fine. I'm gonna take out number five. Any further comments on that one? Oh. We have a motion. <coughs> I make a motion to approve the order of conditions for. 19 across it. Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion <coughs> carries. Please sign. Next, we have the order of conditions for the Kirane property at 17 Kildee Road. Septic system retaining wall and driveway additions. Any comments on, on this one? No. no. I have none. Um, I move that we accept the order conditions as written for 17 Kilby Road. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, coming around. Next, we have an order condition for Davenport Properties, Zero Main Street, construction of a two family dwelling. We did get revised plans. I work um, the, the day after the hearing, I had a call from Christian Davenport and we sat down and looked at um, planting. So I have a few copies if you want to see them. Um, but what we kind of spaced out is six trees, six white pines, kind of 
as they're, I'm happy to pass this around if I can have it back because I only have the three. Six white pines and then 15 native shrubs and it's on the plan that those are to be a mix of shade tolerant plants such as arrowwood viburnum, inkberry, sweet pepper bush, sheep laurel. Um, if you want to see that, you're more than welcome to. Should those plantings be part of the special conditions? Uh, they are, I believe. Um, so that yep, just number six. That existing roadway is going to stay the same as it is. It's not going to be okay. Um, they're going to dig like just bit holes, you know, bigger than needed to put the plants in to let them grow. But they're not yeah, going to. They're not going to fill it back no. in to to uh, match the existing contour to where no. it was. No. no. Yeah, I'll take a quick look. So one thing um, we did speak about when I met with Mr. Davenport is like special condition number five, along the proposed edge of clearing on the plan, two man stones and native planting shall be installed. These are to create a barrier between usable yard area and area that is to be remain natural and undisturbed. Is that sufficient for you? <coughs> opposed to a fence or something. A fence or just stones or just plantings. It says stones and plantings. Right. That's what I, 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 the way I kind of envisioned it was, and I was going to put it on the plan and I hadn't, is kind of on the corners of the proposed edge of clearing, like along the driveway corners, maybe at the corners where the limit of work is going to be, to have stones there and then to kind of fill in between that with plants. Help me out here. What is a two-man stone? A stone as big as two men or a stone that two men can lift? That one. Um, what kind of man? My kind of man or his kind of man? <laughs> it's roughly, a, what, 150 to 200 pound stone. Oh, man. If not heavier. If not yeah, heavier. That hurts to even think about, but yeah. okay. I, it I means, know. in the trade, it's just a stone that is not easily removable by one person. So, okay. you know, a guy can't go out there and... In layman's terms, it's a big rock. Big rock. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know that either before I started this. One of the things they did on that site plan, I believe, surrounded by the driveway on the road, there, there's supposed to be, that's supposed to be natural area. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's within the 200 foot riverfront and yep. they, they didn't count it as cleared so that would be that should actually have those stones and plantings as well okay so I can add that mm -hmm. um, and, and that has to stay things there. this is considered natural okay yeah. that has to stay because otherwise it would put them over their 5,000 square feet yeah. of disturbance for riverfront area if they bit, were to clear that a little bit tricky because you know it's not really part of the rest of it but yeah it I'll that in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That'll become a special condition to to not clear that. Well, I mean, uh, it's really not supposed to, but right. yeah, it'd be nice to to check on that. Could be very easily uh, overlooked. Miss. I wouldn't be surprised if they bulldoze it right off the bat. Yeah, bat. Right. <laughs> we will uh, make sure they don't. <clears throat> Definitely don't want to see driveway there or you know anything like that. No. I'll take that back, yeah, so I don't lose it. We'll pass that back. Unless, yeah, I say unless you want to put it in when it comes through, but <coughs> I'll take that back. <coughs> okay, just so a couple of typos those. in here. Oh, what I do. They're certified. Oops. <laughs> I think and that's uh, pretty much on all of them. <laughs> then. Uh, is it? No, I don't know. That's a template that I use. Maybe it didn't happen at the end of the line, so I didn't notice it. Certified. Where? Really? Is hereby? I don't know. I haven't seen any anyway, other ones. Whatever. I'll check all that. And yep. then, uh, just grassy mix in. I don't oh. know. Maybe it's your it. side. It should be, the mix should not be there on number seven. Grass seed in within the approved area or just? Within. Mixing yes. in or out. Yeah, I see. Okay. 
sometimes I type faster than I think, or vice versa. Well, you got a lot of writing here, so it happens. Mm -hmm. Well, we can have a motion if people are ready to accept this. I move to accept the order of conditions with um, the modifications previously discussed up for 375 Main Street, the Davenport property. Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Do a couple certs. Yep. Next, we have two certificates of compliance. Um, current property, 16 Bank Street, beach maintenance. They, they've they been, um, so this, these are both results of, um, actually, at least one of them was a result of Nikki's sending out the reminders that things are expiring, or expired. So Curran's is expired, um, and they're asking for a certificate of compliance. So unfortunately, it was, you know, we caught it after the fact that it had expired. It is their responsibility to make sure their pump permits don't expire. But um, I'm sure they still want to keep doing beach raking activity. They're just to the west of Bank Street, like immediately to the west of Bank Street Beach, where we have had birds, the plovers. So we'll make them aware, but there's not a way for me at this point um, to put an ongoing condition on that um, to allow them because they were quickly coming up on this next year. Um, so I'll work with them on that, but um, maybe if it comes to it, the commission can think of some, you know, like a one year type of permit if, if to continue doing some raking this year until they can get, get application, you know, the formal application, and it's up to you. They've been doing everything right. Um, it's just unfortunate that this has, um, that this expired before we could renew it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I don't understand the need for a temporary permit. So this permit was for beach raking and fencing. Um, mm -hmm. It's expired right now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the plover season starts at the end of March this year. Um, hopefully it's enough time for them to reapply and refile with conservation. Um, but if they want to start raking their beach again this year, technically they do not have a permit to do so without. You mean before plover season starts? During. Well, You're allowed to rake during, we, we rake during plover season too, but you have to have monitors. There's certain times you can't. Sometimes you can't rake if they happen to kind of nest right in the middle of, you know, your beach. But um, as long as you s apply, you, as long as you abide by a lot of regulations, usually you can still do beach activities. But you need a permit. So hopefully there's enough time for them to essentially turn in what they turned in several years ago. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's just, it just is a process, though. If they can't accommodate the timing for the process, can we do a temporary permit? Yes, without you could do it administratively, but I would want the commission, instead of me signing off on that okay. administratively, I'd like the commission to look at that okay. um, because it's, a, it's above and beyond usually what I would do administratively. Okay, because okay? there are a lot of conditions on that. But they have been, they've been doing a good job, so. And for them, what does beach raking entail? Is it a machine? Or yep, it is a machine. Um, they hire somebody who has a, um, a barber beach rake, I and see. they go out and they, they rake the beaches. And it's typically not until at least mid-May, but I mean, that's when active nesting season is. They start raking mid-May to early June when the people come. That's height of the bird season if they're nesting. And they like to nest on this section of beach, so. Um, so I, I would recommend a certificate of compliance um, just to close this out because it's expired. Nothing can be done under it. And then actually, if you want to loop, loop them together, the next one, Mr. Chairman, for Elizabeth, Fred and Elizabeth Marsh for 23 Betty's Lane, it's just a reissuance of a sort of compliance. We issued it in the 80s, but they never recorded it, and they need a new original copy um, to get it off their deed. So I'd recommend certs for both of them. Okay, thank you. 
Any comments on those two? Okay. okay. I move that we approve certificates of compliance for both 16 Bank Street as well as 23 Betty's Lane. Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. There's two here. Please sign both. Done. You can help me with the next one, Jim. <laughs> too. But, um, sure. But if you'd like to, or if you want to introduce it. Uh, sure, I can start. Um, so yeah, these are recommendations from the Real Estate and Open Space Committee. Um, some of them are uh, town owned land that's in the control of the Board of Selectmen, and others are either in uh, tax lien or owners unknown. And we're basically trying to uh, get everything where it should be um, and get some of these properties either on the tax rolls or uh, into conservation or water department or affordable housing or various uh, other municipal uses are even possibly for sale. So we've kind of gone through this list, which is much larger than this, um, dozens of properties. And uh, these were some that have been recommended for uh, review by the Conservation Commission to uh, possibly come into our uh, control as conservation land. The, um, the first two, at least, on your list were ones that a couple of years ago, the, concert, the Real Estate and Open Space Committee was a list similar to this, and these were two of the properties that were on the list that are Board of Selectmen parcels, Zero Great Western Road and Zero Depot and Zero Middle, which um, it's in your packet yeah. of um, maps that we gave you, hopefully in order. Um, so these are Board of Selectmen parcels, the Commission, Real Estate and Open Space and the Commission requested for various reasons that they go into conservation, um, particularly zero depot and zero middle. Um, they have certified rural pools on them. So this is the depot road that's closer to the you know, central part of Harwich, uh, not West Harwich. And um, you know, one is close to Sand Pond. There's nothing happening on it. That's zero Great Western. So no action was taken, I think partially because we also talked about making some of the town forests um, conservation land and there was a lot of disagreement about how much because the gun range is there and we obviously don't want jurisdiction over the gun range but I think the other those other ones got kind of lost in the melee um, so no action was taken on any at that point um, uh, so essentially what real estate and open space is you know, looking for a recommendation from the Conservation Commission on each of these if you are still interested in them going to conservation, um, and then we'll bring it to the Board of Selectmen. The other parcels, uh, do you want me to go through them more individually? I, I think um, you know, your recommendation and, and Jim's is, um, you know, if you guys want to give the recommendations for each item, and, and uh, yeah. it all seems like a, a good idea, but if there's priorities, if there's different nuances that you sure. want to describe. There's a couple that make a little well, first of all, the wire department, especially the one, especially these parcels that are in tax lien, mm -hmm. where there is some money assigned to them, there it makes a certain amount of sense for them to go to the water department and to be open space land for wellhead protection. Mm -hmm. um, however, if they decide not to go after them, I would say that they definitely should come to conservation. Um, so. so such of those, um, go ahead. Uh, one little, might be kind of a typo, but like the Nathan Walker mm -hmm. Road one, which um, <coughs> I, I don't think it should, uh, what does it say? It's not really I, I water don't think protection. it's appropriate to go for, to the water department, no. but I guess it's, it's just for conservation. Yeah, so conservation. So that one is, that's, Nathan Walker Road, the 1.9 acre a piece. property, essentially. 
That's, I mean, that's a mixture of wetland and it, Yeah, it is, and it abuts it fox nest, so. Yeah, it wouldn't be appropriate to develop as a well site, I don't okay. think. But. No, maybe it meant for, like, water quality protection or something, just yes. as open space. Um, so one of the things that's happening is some of these properties are rapidly being gobbled up by mm -hmm. developers. So the one on Little Shaver Lane, which is, you know, potentially a really important acquisition for the water department because yeah. it's directly upstream from the major wells is, you know, they've already gone in there and dug test holes and... Um, yeah, that's for sale right now, isn't it? Some yeah, of it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, and you know the town still doesn't even have any. No one's paid taxes on it. You know, it's it's a weird situation. So we're trying to act on these things, and um, what's happening is with uh, modern uh, genealogical sites, mm -hmm. it's become a lot easier to track down through hundreds of years. Uh, is that happening? And is that's it? happening. Yeah. And so th and. The Echo Woods lots, mm -hmm. the little Shaver Lane. I noticed that the Nathan Walker one was surveyed in the past two months. So, mm -hmm. I mean, people are going after this stuff hard because there's so much value. And this li list is public because it's the tax lien right. list from the treasurer. Um, so it's uh, how do they survey it if it's not their property? Yeah, there's nothing to say you can't. You there's can. nothing to say that you can't hmm. dig test holes. It's exploratory. It's, uh, wow, well, even it's though it might be private land. Yep. It's, well, they, well, that would be between. Their, their first step, they go um, to the, the heirs, the theoretical heirs, and right. make deals with them. Right. And there might be dozens of them in certain mm -hmm. cases, but they're, they're getting it done. Huh. Um, so, you know, I kind of feel like time is of the essence on some of this stuff. Uh, some of the properties are very important um, for water protection. Mm -hmm. Others make sense for for other other purposes but um <clears throat> so like on that property on L little Sh shaver lane mm -hmm. uh you call it out as uh owners unknown yep but that's not strictly true or um, but, uh, owners suspected is that what well we, we are uh, actually in the process of trying to take that paying a consultant to go through it mm -hmm. and deal with it and that, you know, money's been paid and whatnot. And in the meantime, just in the past few months, someone's gone in there and uh, dug test holes and surveyed it and uh, applied for a subdivision with the planning board. Um, they, they, they beat us to the punch, I think, no basically. That can be done? Well, without it being recorded, no ownership being recorded, but um, yeah. they are claiming ownership now that they found the heirs uh, oh. and bought the property. Okay, so they found the heirs. They bought that, the property? Well, that's what they're, yeah, that's, that's what, what they're, they're claiming. claiming. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting thing that's going on, and it's kind of been asleep for decades, and it hasn't come up much, but it seems to be uh, getting kind better of and people rapidly. Are Does the town process reach out to potential heirs? It would be a, a similar process mm -hmm. um, if it's an eminent domain taking, which is... I believe how they did the Judah Eldridge property, mm -hmm. which is essentially a similar situation. Mm -hmm. um, heirs yeah. could could possibly come forward, and they would have to be compensated if they did come forward. I think for that one, the town did a paid for a title search, and mm -hmm. I think the closest heir had like one one hundredth of an interest or something like wow. that one. But still, it's a possibility. It's always the risk like of a, eminent a, domain. Uh, a three-year window. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what what happens? Um, some money has to be kind of set aside mm -hmm. to potentially pay them for three years. Yep. And after that is ended, that goes back into the general fund. So mm -hmm. most of the time, it wouldn't cost the town a penny to get the land. Um, there's just that possibility that mm -hmm. uh, does, <coughs> does the town pay for the, the taxes that are owed? Only to themselves, yeah, yeah, to the town. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's not pay them, a, like, a cost per no se. Cost, but yeah. Like it's with right Judah on. Eldridge, that yeah. money was CPC funding, so the money came out of right. CPC and went in to pay. There was there was some controversy there, about yes. that, which right. was uh, a little hard for most people to understand. I right. think that um, the money from CPC 
ended up in the general fund. Yep. yep. Which, you know, yeah, well, is what it is. It's but the uh, same origin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is great. You guys did all this legwork, and um, these are the priorities for conservation. For conservation. Water water protection. Yeah. Um, I, I was considering uh, adding the town forest um, minus the shooting range because it has been found that that is a separate property, um, a separate lot onto this. Um, I'm, I'm concerned there's a, a little, there's some talk in town of developing the town forest for, for housing, which is uh, okay. not something no. I like to hear. I mean, that's, um, to me, that's a really important conservation property. Again, is upstream of all the mm -hmm. Depot Road wells and Chatham's wells. Yep. You know, it's been the well, historical uh, yeah. Boy Scout camp. It's one of the last areas you can actually hunt in anywhere around here without being mm -hmm. within 500 feet of someone's house. Right. So, you know, I, I guess it was bought, I mean, it's the Charles Holmes Memorial Forest. Yep. But for some reason, it may have been before the Conservation Commission was even a thing. I'm not sure. I think it was in around 1960. But um, it's well, it, it, it's it was, not. It was prior to the Conservation because the Commission, I think, started in yeah. 60, uh, <clears throat> 64, I believe. Who well, holds right the deed? The Board of Selectmen is in control of that. And, uh, I would like to see it. We can um, either add it or take it up separately. I wouldn't want to have that hold up these because that's what it had done in the past. But if it is a clear different area, maybe we can have a discussion with the police chief too. Yes. To yeah. See if they've stayed within their confines. Yeah, it does appear through like the GIS maps that that um, okay. it was maybe for that reason it was uh, right. subdivided. But okay. Well, Either um, way, I, I agree with you. It should go to conservation if, if it's not going to impact their operations at the shooting range. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it should. I'm not suggesting that. Right. Um, so we're, we're, when these go, if the Conservation Commission votes on these, it's going to go back to real estate and open space for a final mm -hmm. uh, vote, and then it would be to the Board of Selectmen. So I, I, I would, I'm proposing uh, just adding the main parcel of the town forest to this list to send back to um, real estate and open space. <clears throat> Is that <clears throat> something that can be done in this form to add a property? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah, I believe the um, the only reason the uh, it was not on there was because of possible objections from the Conservation Commission due to the shooting range oh. being on there. Yeah. Um, but it's I think it's from the Commission, the Selectmen. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, we proposed it before the Commission in the favor, was in favor of um, a lot of the town forest going to conservation. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what is the status of the grassy pond area? That's all property unknown. No, that's miscellaneous, actually. It should have been labeled differently. There is an owner. Back taxes are owed. It's all wetland. Mm -hmm. um, and we're starting to be in the process of talking with that person. Okay. It was a bog? Yeah. It's not, it would be very diff. I can't say it's not developable because it hasn't been proven, but to be not. But it, it would be very difficult to develop and make use of that property. It's assessed as a wetland. Mm -hmm. It's like 22 or 23 acres. Yeah. But it could provide uh, the ability to manage the Absolutely. water better. For well, the, yeah, and be part of the whole restoration effort. To me, that's that's a real high priority on this list. Yeah, that's yeah. what we thought too. Yeah. So I mean, if you want to assign a prior, at least you don't have to do them all. But if you wanted yeah. to assign a top priority, that's fine. Well, it, let's hear from everyone else. For me, I, I'm ready to accept your recommendations right down the line. And thank you guys for all this legwork. I think it's fantastic. Um, any thoughts, Mark and John, on individual sites or the whole package? Questions you have on them? I don't really have any questions except there are some choices here. That is, a couple of these you're suggesting they go to the water department, but without knowing whether the water department of 
will go along with that. So I guess how do we? They're going to be meeting about supposedly. They're going to be meeting about this soon. It's essentially a, a funding issue. Yeah. So some of them, we could go through it. Some of them just say conservation. <clears throat> so which of these have some budgetary uh, impact? That's, that's the part I, know. I just don't understand about the process. The first two <clears throat> stars is no budget it's it's the town already owns them oh two just, stars the first the first two ones on the list yeah okay the town already owns so that's just transfer of jurisdiction okay the other ones there is i believe i'm just quickly looking through them there is some sort of monetary responsibility for them whether it's i mean i know for example the woodland road property um I want to say for the 6.5 acres there, which already, it abuts, the reason we said water for some of these too is it also abuts water department mm -hmm. and conservation land. Mm -hmm. So Woodland Road, for instance, I can't remember the exact number, but between 40 and 60 grand, that's it. it. it that's pretty so minimal. Yeah. For that tract, so somebody would have to pay. But for us at the moment, we're just agreeing that we'd priorities. like to see these things happen and mm -hmm. whatever monetary or budgetary issues there are or down the line from us anyway they're yes, downstream yeah. so yeah okay no yeah. I, I think it's all good ideas i i think it's fantastic really the only thing if, if you really want a priority i would say the first and the last property in the list i think the sand pond and the grassy pond ones are have really high conservation values um, but i don't know if you need priorities or not it's it's really depends on we need a vote tonight to support it and yeah. what, whatever you guys suggest for yeah what we're I think we're basically gonna present all of these to the uh, selectmen mm -hmm. um, for conservation there are other properties that we're going to present to them for uh, possible affordable housing use and others mm -hmm. possibly for sale or mm -hmm. other, so the, the, this is, these are only a few of many uh, many properties that are mm -hmm. under review when will the rest of that information come available to the public, um, I believe we're going to vote to send it to the selectmen at the next meeting, if not the next one, on the one after that. So it would be in uh, either two weeks or six weeks. Um, then it would go to the selectmen. They, they'll be hold a public agenda. hearing on that. The real estate and open space hearings are, are public mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then eventually this would all be at town meeting. Right. So That's the other piece of there, things. There's a, there's a kind of a lot of steps to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I should just note quickly, just so you don't have the wrong impression, the ones that are off Chatham Road and the ones that are labeled Six Ponds area. Um, I, on the maps I gave you, I kind of just circled a large area. It is not all of those parcels in that <coughs> circle. It's, some of those are privately owned, but it just it means that's the general within that those circles really are where the properties are. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to be clear about that. It's not all of the properties that are circled. The, the Chatham Road uh, properties, again, these long wood lots that have mm -hmm. remained undeveloped are very close to the wells. Um, than a, yeah. few, a few hundred feet. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes a lot of sense for the water department to right. control. Yeah. <clears throat> As is that one that up on Woodland Road in North Harwich. I mean, that, that's adjacent to a well field that, yes. you know, heaven forbid anything ever happened to the well field off of Route 39, but, um, you know, adding mm -hmm. land and potential well sites up there for, for the town is, is important as well. So they've, they've, the water department is aware of all this, and they sh that should be looking into them. So. Yeah, they've, they've voiced support, yeah. basically, yeah. Um, whether or not uh, they're willing to pay for it out of their budget, that remains to be seen. But right. But they are supportive of the ones that are noted for them? Yes, yeah. They're basically supportive of any of it because they feel the biggest threat to uh, water quality is essentially just mm -hmm. development around the, mm -hmm. the well area. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so we are looking for support of the list um, if you have any changes. And um, yeah, so we can, Jim and I can bring this back to real estate and open space. Well, I move that we uh, support the list as written and thank you for your efforts. Could you add the addition of the, yes, I, the portion of the town for us? Sure. Okay. Yep, with that one addition. <clears throat> Any other thoughts before we, um, well, let's have a second first if there is a second. I second. So for discussion, d does anybody want to prioritize or does anybody want to say something else in regards to the list? make the choices on what to prioritize what what uh, is it board of selectmen is it um, how will that happen if it's property for purchase mm -hmm. money assigned I think it would go back to real estate and open space and ultimately conservation for support of, of right any funding mechanism to be used so it's um, you know if we were to purchase a property it would you'd, you'd know about it yeah and be able to weigh in Yeah, ultimately, I think the Board of Selectmen makes a decision. The Real Estate and Open Space Committee is an advisory committee. Yeah. It's not a, uh, not a decision maker. And town meeting. <laughs> and town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but the commission would be a potential um, sponsor of that article. So. Right. Any thoughts on a discussion whether you guys want to prioritize anything or I just want to make one quick notice I forgot this so just so you're aware um, there were roughly 125 parcels on the tax list and real estate and open space and other members we went through each each parcel Wow to figure out what what they would be good for um, and so that's just a tax title not even and we also going through all the town owned parcels to make sure they're in the right place, like where they should be, really. So, and as Jim said, there may even be a couple parcels not in conservation jurisdiction, but Board of Selectmen kind of general use that may be available for affordable housing mm -hmm. for sale. Yeah. So if uh, they're not connecting the conservation or <coughs> for other interests, so. That's a great effort. You've been, talents has been the works, but I can imagine it was a lot of. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope some land gets back to rightful owners and you know, they need to pay taxes, but I just hope mm -hmm. that this stuff is not being lost. Um, and I have no idea if that's really a legitimate concern or not. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, most of it's um, the ones that are really an issue go back 100 years or more yeah. mm -hmm. uh, since anyone's really yeah. claimed it. Um, yep. So, you know, ultimately mm -hmm. there are heirs right. out there, but they're it's a long time ago. And I do hope the funds are there to put some of the land to conservation because, you know, it, it, the, the whole, you know, problem we have with nutrient loading is just it's not going to be mitigated um, with large amounts of new development that wasn't really forecasted. Um, so that's a concern I have as well. Yeah, most, most of these areas are have basically been used as community open space for mm -hmm. decades. Right. Um, so it, it's not really like we're gaining anything, but we'd be losing something if it, if it goes the other way. Um, but there's a, there's a build out forecast, right? And, and so are these parcels included in that or? They are, if they're, if they are upland parcels assessed as upland parcels, yeah. some of them aren't even being assessed. Right. Um, but, uh, just cause nothing to assess some of these parcels we don't know exactly where they are huh. um not these oh. not these oh that's a whole conversation for another day um <laughs> you know deep okay. language about you know a peg in a tree essentially oh, yeah, it right. makes it hard to know exact corners and where things are <laughs> but um you know where they are you just don't know exactly exactly where they are, where they are right oh, there's one or two that we don't know where they are at all really 
Well, I but hope, anyway. I hope oh, that sorry. factors being discussed, you know, when you have locations that are upgrading of groundwater flow to areas that are being degraded, um, is that in part of the discussion? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's kind of a they're being assessed for as possible areas for build out to reduction, mm -hmm. you know, of those of that acreage mm -hmm. comes off of the TMDL. Yeah, that'd be good. Fits within an impaired watershed. Right. Okay, well then um, I guess we're ready for a vote. We'll just approve as moved the list and, and thank you guys for all your work. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, we got a set of minutes and then we're done. Oh. Oh, September 5th. All right, nice. Wow. Never happens two times in a row. Never. <laughs> I went through the September 5th meeting minutes ahead of time, and I, I don't have any comments. That was the big run of certs that we went through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have any comments. I wonder how the uh, kelp farm is doing. Any, any? I, I did hear that they have growth on the lines, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah. Hope they get a crop. <laughs> Any comments at all on the minutes? I have nothing. Okay. Well. So I'll go ahead and move that we accept the minutes as written for September 5th, 2018. Second. Second that they're done. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Send those down to Brad if you sign the first page since they're clean, yep. Brad. Thank you. Um. I'm not sure, Amy, early if, if we should have had more discussion on the Hall's comments, but because it wasn't on the agenda, I didn't really want to encourage it, so that's okay with everybody. I think it was good to let them let everybody speak. Yep. Um, but we really can't have too much of a dialogue because it's not on the agenda. Right. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have anything else for you. Wow. Just other, I'm just trying to think of announcements, but I already announced that the MACC conference will be the first Saturday in March. Um, I have not gotten the registration forms yet for it. Uh, they haven't made, publicized it, but it's, if you want to put a tickler on your calendar for Saturday of March up in Worcester, um, it's always a good day. It's also the day that we have our budget meetings with the Board of Selectmen, so I don't know if I'll be able to go, um, but we'll see. And looking for a few more, scheduling a few more outside work days with AmeriCorps and other um, volunteers this winter, so. I'll let you guys know when all those are. If you want to come out and have a good time, if you if you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any um. Oh, violations! I got a couple. MACC training sessions. Sometimes they have individual regional training sessions, and I haven't seen it in the Cape for a while. I've been checking. No, yeah. they don't really have. Um, they got rid of their circuit rider program, and th when they had like an individual person assigned to different regions, and I think they're bringing that back, but I haven't really heard yet. Um, yeah, they used to have a lot more classes on the Cape, and um, once in a while there's a webinar, but there's there's not a whole lot. Yeah, the um, classes are good, I think, because yeah. you know you, you meet other people, and they're good refreshers. But we all were busy, so it's hard to travel that far. Yep. So it'd be nice if they had some local. Um, Jim sent me an email with a couple of um, concerns about storage of some materials too close to a river, which I will check out and he sent me, you know, who he thinks we think it is. Um, and also, I did check Island Pond today. I took a walk at my lunch break and walked down there and I saw what you were saying. I'm not sure if it's for review though, because I looked across at the property and there's an awful lot of vegetation 
that, so I, I, I'm thinking it's somebody who lives in the area who, because they made a path, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's somebody who likes to fish from there Great and they created that beach. so they could cast easier. Yeah, I thought of that too. When I first saw it, I was like, all right, you know, I kind of get a little path, a little bit of a clearing. They had cut a, uh, some tupelos and maples. Um, I didn't really say anything. But uh, they cut um, trees. Uh, some Atlantic white cedars, which are kind of on our land. rare and, um, and uh, on town conservation wow. land. So that, that was oh disappointing to see. Yeah. I'm not really sure how to handle it other than maybe putting a sign up first that you know we're being aware and whatnot. Maybe talk to the people who live near there. But I, again, I was looking, I kind of stood as close to that property as I could and looked down and I said, there's so much other stuff in their way. I don't see how it would really be a huge view benefit. I think yeah. it is somebody who's using that area down there or people <coughs> who are using that area wow. as like a little fishing spot or something like that. Who knows? Yeah. Hangout spot. Yeah. Yep. But how do we um, stop that? Does it, does it seem appropriate to have a spot like that there? Um. All right, it's basically a, it's a pond that's turning into a cedar swamp, which is a, a really uh, mm -hmm. neat habitat. It's probably one of the, the best cedar habitats in Harwich anyway. One of the only ones that's actually growing, White not, not receding. Yeah. 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 Wow. A lot of that's happened in the last 20, 30 years, too. Um, yeah, cutting that particular species doesn't sound good at all. And um, so maybe a, a sign that says, you know, sensitive, Sensitive yeah, habitat. Please, please keep habitat. What? Wait, Is maybe when I get a chance. Um, just one that was cut. No, well, it's one well, cedar. Well, I think only one white cedar is probably th thirty-five feet or something, kind of a me medium size. But um, several tupelos and red maples and uh, a, a number of smaller saplings. Um, and there's also some erosion happening now. That you might have noticed because of the opening and the, you know, yeah. understory overstory. Well, with your permission, I'd like to make it make that path harder for people to access, mm -hmm. and either take deadfall in the area and completely try to a lot of it, and make it very hard for people to get down there and let the area regenerate. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, yeah, and that's a little sign of some kind. And a I sign. Know if you, yeah. If you see them around, but uh, people might just might not be aware that. Yeah, that and we always is. try to make it educational, explain why it's so important. <coughs> Ecologically, so, but um, did it take a chainsaw? Or was it was just hand cut. It looked like it was hand cut. And it, it, some of them are kind of looked like they're maybe trying to hide the fact that it wasn't uh, wind or whatever because yeah. some were like half hand cut, then ripped, and then moved aside. Yeah, so, hmm. um, hmm. it's a little bit that, I mean, that could just be coincidental. And there was like a, a run of cutting in August or July. And this, the cedar looks within a few it's weeks. It's fresh. Oh, wow. um, it's very fresh, yeah. Would There's also a conservation fish? restriction on that parcel. People yeah. want to fish there? I mean, is it too swampy to fish? Not right there. Yeah. <coughs> it just be a real good pickle spot. Oh, no, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I could see there being some yeah. fish in there. But, uh, <coughs> it's, it's, you know, pretty small. Um, it is. Shallow and everything. Yeah. So I walked down by uh, the end of uh, uh, um, you know the house right on the water down there. Just west. Uncle Vini's, where yeah. you were? Uh, it's not Uncle Vini's. It's Neilan, no, right? The house they're going to tear down. Oh yeah. And looked at the uh, the footpath over the w wetlands, which I hadn't been. Mm. to the site visit, and okay. I had, but I was kind of surprised by what was there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a hacked together, no. repaired thing. Somebody brought a bunch of stone in there. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that was a truckload of stone under the, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know what, what, it's not two-man stone, but it's <laughs> That's that coming big back. fist-sized stone. What road? that goes from the beach over just the western edge of the wetland there. It's the, it's the house that was proposed to be put on piles, right? Is what you're talking right, about? Right, that one. It's not <laughs> that property, I don't think. Oh, Julian. It's the one it at is the on end of Julian. It is. That's ju it's the one the right on the beach. Yeah, yeah. 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 
and there's there's always been the last I hadn't been sort of walked in from the beach there for a while, maybe a year or more, but there was you know sort of a ratty uh, you know two by six yeah uh, I don't know what you call it, way over the edge of the swamp. Oh, it's very formal. Somebody now. somebody done dumped a bunch of stone where that had been and built brand new pressure treated yeah, uh, I saw it. walkway over the corner and I know you'd mentioned that but I didn't realize it's still they asked for a continuance so it's that's coming back that's why we haven't closed closed that discussion out um, because that's part of the project is whether or not to leave it or not um, and I have to look and see if it's actually I think some of it's on the property and some of it's not um, but that yeah, we'll be talking about that again. Determine the most of it was on the ad adjacent, adjacent property. property. Right, it's I like a remember. neighborhood. It's a neighborhood right, resource for getting down to the beach. Right. They don't want to walk around and go down to uh, right. Red River Beach. To but it, yeah, there's no permit for it, and right. they definitely did more than just replace what was there. They so that'll right. that'll come up again. Whether yeah, it's it's been planks forever. Just you know. Four by fours, planks, two by fours. Yeah, there's PVC pipes. It's all can interconnected. Yeah, what's there now is definitely PVC holding it with the two yeah, by with right. the two by four. Yeah, it should have been jurisdictional. What oh, it was absolutely, done. Absolutely, yeah. I don't really have a problem with the path being there. You know, I'm curious if the the house owners want it there or not. You know, that's another issue. But yeah, somebody should have pulled a permit for replacing that. I think. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll look into that a little bit more. I just made a note. Yeah. I, I I would prefer having it just a natural path without the walk, but I know it gets wet at times. Yeah, oh, it's, it's marsh. It's very wet where that is. Yeah. Um, so, and it has been planks for a long time, so I suppose there's you know, some precedent there. Yeah, if they brought in fill, then it's not. That's brand new stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into it a little bit more. And I'm gonna visit that company at the, uh, later this week about the storage of some traps down by the river. Yeah, that was just the uh, right on the Herring River where the bike trail crosses it. And there's a, I'm not sure who owns that bog, uh, right to the north of the bike trail. Um, on the other side of the Halls bogs, but the, uh, Oyster Company has their their business there now, mm -hmm. and for some reason they, they stored all their oyster pens, I believe is what they are, mm -hmm. they grow them right on the river, so the river is virtually touching it. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen that, because yeah, they, they, like they've kind of kept everything yeah. close to their... I mean, they, they, they probably kind of smell, um, yeah. and that's maybe why they did it, but it, does, it seems like they should have them. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll talk to them. But Get them. That's a hopefully a simple case of just get them out of there. You know, yep. yeah. written written warning. Don't do that. I was called to go down to that culvert this summer to see if it was blocked. Mm. So some locals felt it was blocked, the herring, and so I, you know, I I try to get state divers down there to look at, it and I, I wasn't successful. It was felt like it wasn't a worthwhile cost, mm. but they would know that the traps were not there then. No, no, they're 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 recent. Yeah, yeah. a few weeks ago. And then I appealed to. Um, DCR that has jurisdiction over the bike trail and ask them to spray their culvert and they have not responded there. So <laughs> I think it's not blocked fully. I think it's the, not, but it's not in good shape. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's well, a pretty important junction for fish passage. Speaking of blocked culverts, the Red River, um, where it goes under, well, it's South Chatham Road mm -hmm. in Harwich. I was walking by there the other day at on an outgoing tide, and the uh, upstream side of the road was like a foot or two above the downstream yeah. side. Yeah, Belize or Depot? Hmm? Depot off no, Belize. No, South well, Chatham Road, almost South in Chatham. Chatham. Oh, um, in in it's the Red River actually Depot okay, on like the, the Chatham run. side. It's yeah. South Chatham the Road itself. I, yeah, I don't know if it's a herring the river, yep. not, not as it goes under uh, Uncle Vini's, but if you keep going north. Oh, I see. Yep. Up heading There's a culvert Chatham. that goes yeah. under the road there, and it looked like it was had to be blocked because, I mean, the, 
the tide was rushing out, but the level on the uh, upstream different. side of the road was a foot or two higher than wow. the downstream side at that particular stage of the tide. Uh, kind of a rocky substrate there, and craggy. I don't know who, who's, I who's responsible for that. I don't know who, who would claim that. Depending out. on the size of the culvert, would determine how quick the water is going to escape. I mean, over a six-hour yeah. period when the time co tide's coming in, yeah. there's a steady rush of water going in. But if it happens to be going out faster. But that one might be a no man's land type deal because it's really half Chatham, half Harwich. So yeah, we'll see right. if anybody well, see if anybody border. is That's anybody's taking care of it. <laughs> yeah, I can't recall that ever being that was kind of my stomping grounds. I, I can't recall it being a difference in elevation. You know, yeah. it, was, it was fairly open flow, pretty craggy rocks in there. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe some upstream debris came down and yeah. Yeah. Locked it. Hard to say. Anything new on the um, Seymour Pond culvert? I did reach out. That's the culvert. It's a private road mm -hmm. that uh, goes over the Herring Run from Seymour to Hinckley's. And it, it was identified as degraded. That's pretty bad. Yep. I, um, I have not heard anything other than from you saying that the homeowner has contacted an engineer to yep. start taking a look at it. He said he was, so I don't. That's know. as much as I know. Okay, I, I can follow up with him and just see where he is. Um, that's a site you'd like to not have further degradation, you know, but it's private. Like, yeah, we'd like it to not get to an enforcement right. level if we can. Yep. Help him. Okay, I'll, I'll follow up with him, see where he is. We're happy to help pa paperwork wise with assisting him. So. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Holy cow. <laughs> it's not always going to be like this, I have to say. Oh, I know. I was <laughs> hoping we could knock out one of the notice of intents. Just it would have been nice. Just yeah. to lighten the load, but it's okay. You've, well, done, you've done a lot of the homework already, so we're in good shape for next time. You know, your, your analysis and all that. So Yeah, I, I don't know what new stuff came in. Um, actually, one big, we're going to have another big one next time. Oh, um, pump station for phase two of the wastewater is going to be on. Um, they need to put, they want to put a pump station within conservation jurisdiction in, in East Harwich. So that will be a notice of intent for you, right. a brand new one. Yep. Not It'll a be small, a big one. Yeah, not a small document, I'm sure. Well, I've worked with them to try to get as far away as possible, understanding that, you know, the wastewater is going to be a huge improvement, mm -hmm. but we still, you know, try to have where, to uh, where buy. Is that? They want to, um, it's off of, um, oh, it's on Muddy Creek, um, Sugar Hill Drive. Yeah. Sugar Hill Drive. So I thought on the, the low I point. The bottom of Sugar Hill Drive. The low Drive. point of Sugar Hill Drive. Huh. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you'll, you'll see that, so. Okay. Got that in today. Today was uh, like the deadline, was the deadline really. Yeah, so. All right, that, that date is when? January. January 16th. Well, I move that we adjourn and we re-meet then. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.